Hello, everybody, and welcome to Swing from the Hip, where we've got our special guest tonight is Sherubin Pasapati. Before we get to Sherubin, welcome once again to Rohit and Taryn. How are you boys doing? Very good, thanks, mate. Yes, busy yeah, very week. Good. Busy very good. Week. Busy week, busy week. Yeah. So, like, look, as we say, we don't want to waste too much time with too much chit chat. So, we're going to head straight into um, this week in history with Rohit. Yes. So this week in history saw the birthday of one of New Zealand's Alex Turner, turned 70 years of age on the 26th of May. Now Turner um, averaged 65.77 in tests against the West Indies alone and was uh, the first New Zealander to score two centuries in a test match, which was held in Christchurch in season 73-74, where New Zealand beat the Aussies for the first time. Uh, and then we have up next... 27th of May, 1977, saw one of the Sri Lanka's greatest batsmen of all time, Mahela Joy Wardner. Uh, he was born on the state uh, again. Now, Mahela, he uh, debuted at the age of 20, and he came into bat. This is beautiful. 790 for four. No pressure on when you come into bat when there's the scores like that, isn't there? And... Um, <laughs> Sri Lanka went on and scored 952 for six against India and Colombo back then. He's become a Sri Lankan player actually to score a triple century for his country when he batted in partnership with another Sri Lankan great, Kumar Singakara, for an epic third wicket partnership of 624 runs, which is the highest for any wicket in tests. And um, I'm going to ask our guest this evening who was the first Sri Lankan player to score a triple century for Sri Lanka. Lastly, my favourite, Mr Cricket, Michael Hussey. He's born on 27th of May also. And it, um, he took 166 days to become the fastest player to 1,000 test runs. But a trivia question, this was one for, to keep in the memory banks for all. Mr Cricket, despite his fabulous record, was the only Aussie cricket captain to lose to New Zealand in the ODI series where every game was over 300 runs. You wouldn't have seen that happen before in any Australian New Zealand matches where you'd lose a series three to zip. Is, is that the series um, that was uh, played in New Zealand? Yes. Yep. There's yeah, the and Jeff, yes. and, and yeah. Jeff Wilson, did Jeff Wilson played in it as no, well? No, no, no. Come on. No. You're, you're getting your <laughs> decades mixed up here. Oh, yeah. I mean, decades. Was... <laughs> uh, this was when, this was when they thought they were going to absolutely pump us. And yes. since... Not quite a second string side, but I think they rested a couple of their big boys. Yes, they did. And we kept going for 300 plus, and then we'd get to like 80 for five, and you'd get like Craig McMillan and someone else, and just rare, Fulton, et cetera, just randomly put in a rear guard, and we'd smash it, like smash it at the back end. It was it was great watching some of that the other uh, week, actually, when exactly what it was, 80 odd for five, and McMillan came out and smashed 100. Just throw his bat, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's a great series, yeah. though, you know, chasing 300s in each of those. I think they left Ponting behind, and a car and he was a captain of the team at the time. So they had Hussey and... in for Ponting. Yeah. 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 I think it could have been Michael Clark. That might have been the other one. Oh, right. Mm. There's a few big names uh, that lose yeah, out. Yeah, so some interesting facts to keep in the memory bank. Yes. Yeah, yes, that was hey, we'll great. We'll take those wins, three zip. <laughs> well, we'll take any win that we get yeah. against Australia. That does, that's their fault if they want to send that's... over uh, their second-rate team. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, look, we'll yeah, move on in this week. To live in the <laughs> we'll move on to news this week with Taryn. Yep, news this week. There is a fair bit happening, and we will start off with some of the administrative matters, which seems to be the most of the stuff we're talking about. Um, World T20 in October looks less and less likely, and there's about four um, likely options that are being discussed at the moment. They're looking at potentially 2021 Feb in Australia. Second option is pushing it down to 2021 in October. Third option, Feb and March 2021, 22, sorry, or October 2022, all of them in Australia. All these four options pose a range of questions and challenges around it, and I'm sure we'll get enough time to discuss this uh, and uh, really chew the fat over it later on. Um, Indian tour to Australia, that schedule has finally been released, subject to two 
uh, government regulations, of course. The first test is scheduled to be played on the 3rd of December at the Gabba, a venue where Australia have not lost a test match since 1988. That test will then be followed by <coughs> the Pink Ball Test in Adelaide, which is now part of their um, regular calendar fixtures, but India is yet to play in Australia. Last tour they were in Australia, they didn't play that, so that'll be quite a marquee affair followed by the Boxing Day test in Melbourne and a New Year's test in Sydney. This hasn't come smoothly, though, because Western Australian cricket CEO Christina Matthews, she's pretty ticked off because they've been left out of the marquee series of the summer and they've been handed Afghanistan as a test match. With no disrespect to Afghanistan, I'm pretty sure Western Australians probably want India there. Um, that... World T20 moving might potentially mean a window for IPL. That's in October, November. There's talk of how that's going to create a bit of a clash for domestic cricketers in Australia and New Zealand. Again, we can discuss this at length, but let's be honest, guys will get released to go to um, India, and it's nothing new where there used to be a Champions League that was played in this very window. So can't see any issues there, but... Look, open to discussion. Uh, New Zealand Cricket Board is now the latest to suffer from, suffer from the COVID crisis as they prepare for redundancies. They're looking to save $6 million and they plan to make $1.5 million of those savings through job cuts at their headquarters in Auckland and via some job cuts in the high performance out in Christchurch. Um, and ICC also has threatened... Uh, India, that they might shift the 2021 T20 World Cup over tax issues. Now, that's nothing new. This started back in 2016, and it's purely a matter of 20, 30 million. So I don't know why <laughs> anyone would argue over 20, 30 million US dollars. So look, someone's got to be the bigger man and let go of it. But look, I think I'm, I'm sure that conversation will be ongoing. Um, on a cricketing front, Indy cricket. We announced that Wellington was going to the market. Now we know Indy Cricket is going to the market for both their men's and women's programs. What that means is Gareth Hopkins' successful reign at the top of the T20 campaign has now come to an end. And um, John Bracewell's position is also up for grabs. Um, it will be quite interesting to see how that unfolds. But now the final part. My absolute pleasure. For the first time in six weeks, I presented to you results from a live cricket game. Vincent Ooh, Premier League awesome. Premier T10 has, has started. It started last week, Friday, and the, there were six teams involved. Team names are Salt Pond Breakers, La Sofria La Hikers, Botanic Garden Rangers, Grenadine Divers, Darkview Explorers, Fort Charlotte Strikers. Six wicked names. Um, Salt Pond Breakers and La Soufrere Hikers are on top of the league with the five wins each. Most runs, as we said to you earlier, when this competition was put, put together, there is a couple of West Indian cricketers playing in it. Most runs, for no number, 221 runs at a strike rate of 172. Best economy rate, also for no number, of 4.91. That's news for this week. Wow. Oh, well, that's a fair bit to take in there. And um, one, one of the interesting ones that I sort of picked up on there was, as you say, the $30 million in, in taxes that uh, the BCCI haven't paid. Is that is that correct there, Taryn? No, so that's what there was a shortfall that ICC, there was a shortfall because um, Indian government must have held on to the tax right. for the event. Yes. Which meant, which then meant ICC withheld 20, 30 million yep. in, out of India's payment distribution. Right. Yep. Which so is because. Year, yep. Sorry, yeah, Karen. This year, they're wanting a guarantee that they won't, they will get tax exemption, exemptions at this tournament. Right. Okay. Because it's, it's interesting. I mean, one of the news stories that we do in the sports morning sports briefing was um, just alluded to the fact that uh, India is the highest um, benefactor out of the ICC um, annual payments um, at 430-odd million US. And then the, the second was England, who was getting about 130 
million US. So there's quite a drop to second place even. So they get quite a bit of a handout from ICC already. Uh, they they generate 70% off it. So they probably try and take their share. Share back again. Yep. Yep. So they, they obviously don't take 70% off it. So they must feel that they do enough. But they yep. do. Yeah. Ah, that that's good. That's great to um yeah, because I mean, on the surface of it, it looks a bit unfair. But um, as you say, yeah. when you when you dig down into the detail of it, uh, becomes a bit more obvious on how these things work. Mm. Ah, that's great. Well, I suppose moving straight on to it. Look, um, so far with the shows that we've had in recent times, we've been around the world. The last few weeks, we've looking at cricket out of Pakistan, Australia, and England. So today, we thought we'd bring it back to grassroots New Zealand. And so we've got our special guest star this week is Sharubin Pasupati. Sharubin is a teacher and a very successful cricket coach who loves to develop the human human beings that he's actually coaching in the classroom and on the cricket pitch, that is. So obvious from his success at top grade, he loves to win cricket games and enjoy that success with a laugh. He feels it's a privileged position to have a positive impact on cricketers, making them not just better cricket players, but better human beings as well. Sharubin has a huge passion for everything cricket, which we'll find about very shortly. So with that, I'd like to welcome Sharubin Pasapati to Swinging from the Hip. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. 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 And how are you, how you, you doing tonight, mate? Very good. Very good had, indeed. Had a busy day at school? Uh, no. So um, this year... Um, I've actually taken a back seat to the missus because mm -hmm. missus wanted to get back into the uh, workforce for after five years. Oh, and, uh, Ruben, I'd like to congratulate it. you very quickly, very quickly, <laughs> that you ever had a front seat to the missus. That anyone <laughs> ever had a front seat to the missus. <laughs> so really well done on actually ever having the front seat. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thanks. No, look, um, yeah, so... My job is to coach cricket and look after the two boys that we have. And, um, yeah, loving it. Um, That's awesome. And, and look, yeah, and the missus, um, she's working from home, which is a little bit of a challenge right now. But, look, fantastic. Yeah, this that year was is great. Be good. You enjoy it, enjoy it. Hey, look, we'll get, in, we'll get into the, um, uh, onto the show, and it's like um, your playing career. Give us a bit of information on where it all started for you. We, we, <laughs> like, what's, what's your roots? Where are you from within New Zealand or over, what, from Sri Lanka? Or yeah. Tell us a bit about yourself yeah. there. Yeah, look, um, we, we lived in Sri Lanka for the first uh, 15 years of my life. And then yep. um, Dad came over to uh, Wellington and um, yeah, played first 11 over there for a little while. And um, just, yeah, loved the game. And... Uh, got into it and then just went went with um uh university i played at manava too um i think i played for north otago when i was in uh, dunedin and uh hut, hut valley and wellington as well so yeah i've been around a, a little bit i think i was a bit of a nomad so yep. to speak, <laughs> uh, got, years just, ago just, just to get a clarification we got a bit of um a tip off possibly and whether it's right or wrong you can correct us here at the moment or tell us did you spend a bit of time in Dunedin as well yeah I did yeah three years in Dunedin and um look best time of my life it was uh just fantastic I know somebody in the Facebook chat room that's going to be agreeing with you about the best time of his life in Dunedin <laughs> was it Dunedin or well, Oxygen? Well, the thing is this: the cricket was cold. Um, I, I'll never forget the very, the very first game of cricket we played there. My hands were in my pocket till I had to bowl. It was that cold, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. But um, I tell you what: the the people there are incredible. Just um, so so welcoming, and um, it really is a real hub. Like I mean, I've never played anywhere. Where, for instance, the you finish the game on the Saturdays, everyone's out, you know, and it's just a, it's a, it's really is a cricket community, and um, yeah, look, um, just loved it, uh, loved it. I, I have to say, the very first game, uh, I was bowling to a young Brendan McCallum, and um, he was, <laughs> he was the first eleven 
captain and he did everything. He opened the batting and we played on an artificial where no turn and it just bounced like hell. So I wasn't trying to turn it. I was, I'm a leg spinner like T. And he hit it up in the air and someone dropped it. I still, I still remember. <laughs> and it was just straight up in the air. But um, we did win the game. But um, uh, McCallum was incredible. I mean, he kept um, when when he was uh, when he was it was his turn to field. Took a leg side stamping. After a while, they weren't getting any wickets. Took the pads out and, and play, bowled a few seamers. He was just it was unbelievable to see. And obviously, what he's done since is just amazing. And so proud of what he's done since, really. And and let's not forget that he actually played in the schoolboys first fifteen, uh, South Island schoolboys first That's fifteen, right. ahead of Dan Carter That's as right. well. That's so right. He's a he ph- was, phenomenal um, sportsman. Oh, huge. Just a just a talent, you know, and I'm so glad that he did all those things he did at the latter part of this. Um, and, and actually a really good man. Um, just lo- loved life, you know, like, for instance, made me feel incredibly welcome and just a yeah, top man. Yeah, great New Zealander for me. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, did you have any dealings with um, our birthday boy for play, this week, Glenn yeah. Turner? Did you play A mm. cricket then? Yeah. Yeah. I, I played... Um, Two seasons of A cricket, and Turner was my coach. I hope oh. he, uh, yeah, I hope he remembers me. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember everything was, he said. Yep, it, it was gold. Oh, mate, the cricket knowledge of that man is, uh, yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. What was the, uh, What was that experience like? Tell us a little bit more about how he was as a coach and what, what, I mean, obviously one of the things we're going to get onto about yourself is the success that you've had in your coaching. And was there things that Glenn Turner did oh, yeah. that you've sort of taken on and what were they? Look, Glenn, Glenn was an, was really interesting. I mean, I, I got on really well with him and um, he, he had a very subtle way of saying, well done. You know, most coaches spend a lot of time, um, you know, patting you on your back or, you know, saying well done in, in so many ways. He, he, didn't, he didn't do that. He, he, he didn't seek you out. Um, it was all about, um, he was very, very uh, what's the word? If you, but however, if, if I went to him and said, what can I do? He would just give you exactly the knowledge that came from years of playing county and, and everything else. And, you know, I mean, yeah, I just loved it. I mean, he he said to me that um, he said I'm I'm trying too many things, which is I think as a as a leg spin bowler, spin I, you do. I, yeah, which you do. And I had a few variations, and you know, and I I thought I'd try them. And he just said, you know, be boring. Don't. The very interesting something that he said was, don't be too intelligent on the field. And I didn't quite get that. I didn't quite get that for years to come. And basically, it's the importance of the stock delivery. He said, you build pressure through that stock delivery, which um, unfortunately, I didn't get to <laughs> years later <laughs> when I was coaching. And, you know, I mean, I used to leak runs, but bowl some magic balls, which, which would either miss the, if it missed the stumps, then you'd go for a few. But if it hit the stumps, then you'd be up. And emotion was a big part of me. And uh, I think that the subcontinental player generally has more emotion rather than, you know, sort of crab things. But look, I mean, fantastic coach. And I've actually, to tell you the truth, I'd love to, love to speak to him again because I don't know even if he knows if, that I'm a coach, but if he's listening, I mean, love to see him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, don't uh, overthink it. Yeah, that's right. We'll have to we'll have to see if we've got any connections that can get Glenn Turner, and then we can get you both on at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be a pleasure. Yeah, he's he's a top man, what, Glenn. Yeah. What one of the things that I remember from Glenn Turner is um early like he would have to be one of the first batters with the ODI format. Obviously, was quite new when he was actually playing, um, yeah. and he basically said, "Well, you've got." the two men outside the circle so you should be just chipping over the top which obviously today is what you try and do is smash it to the boundary though not just chip it but in fact yeah. he was the first player to actually talk about chipping it over the oh. in the ring oh look ashwin you you mate he was way before his time 
he was conservative but it was in 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 the right in the right uh, method methodology he was way before his time you know the thinking that he had about the game um so many things like that you know um yeah and i mean he's he's brought out a book and usual glen turner it's it's um you know it's uh, all swords out and you know he's <laughs> telling <laughs> telling everyone about you know how t20s not the thing and you know and i love it you know i mean i just think he's you know he's one of those guys who quite different to the normal joe average but the knowledge of cricket yeah unmatched i reckon it was just a phenomenal guy well i suppose it, Taryn, you got anything to add there or you got anything to add well i mean that's no, no. that's not a surprise <laughs> i i know very little there about glen turner other than one or two phone calls in my life but i d- when i did see him in and around the changing room so i think he was a selector maybe when i just started up and you just see him and you could recognize him because he's got a you know, you can see Glenn Turner. You can tell. If you've seen him on TV, it's the same man with a lot more grey hair now, right? <laughs> and you would just, for me anyway, again, like Shrugan says, it must be an ethnic thing. It's the cultural thing. I saw someone great and famous and bigger than me. I'd just go the other room. I wouldn't even go and say hello. Like, <laughs> most European guys would be like, oh, hey, Glenn, how you going? And they, you know, they go up and you'd know them by name and, I'm like, oh my god, that's Glenn Turner. Shit, I've got to go into another room. <laughs> so I'd walk around yeah. and kind of avoid him purely. And to me, it was out of respect. But I hope it probably looked like, oh, look at this guy. You know, he doesn't even come say hello. Yep. But yeah, so look. I never actually, I did the same with Dipak. I was scared mm. to talk to Dipak. Even now, when I see him, I'm like, oh my god, that's Dipak Patel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, the, the other thing to remember is um, when Glenn Turner was coaching Otago, his deputy was Hessen. And I reckon ah. a huge part of Hessen's um, success with New Zealand and, and with everything else was to do with how much he learned from Glenn Turner. You know, and, and Glenn was a great, great teacher. You know, I mean, and, and T is exactly right. The more humble you were as a player, the more you got out of Glenn Turner. You know, because um, the people that were a bit, um, dare I say, it, up themselves, didn't actually <laughs> re- realize uh, his his value or his quality. Yeah. Well, they they wouldn't they couldn't. Um, there was a few runs, wasn't there? Yeah, ab- yeah. Right, absolutely. I mean, I think Perori, Chris Kane. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They all but, um, you know, exactly. The tour of West Indies. Yeah. Mm. But, um, you know, I used to enjoy listening to Glenn when he was commentating as well back in yeah. the day and listening to his commentary while you're a youngster. And it was just like, he, I guess he had that manner about him, didn't he? And that's probably why you boys were highly car- in the next door um, changing room in that when you entered the room. And um, he was, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget, he was an absolute pioneer because he, yeah. he's the first New Zealander to, to play professional cricket. Mm-hmm. And um, yes. you know, and New Zealanders yep. didn't like that. The administration didn't like that, but he said, no, they did it. It. And yep. I'll go and play." And then they came back to him <laughs> at the end of his career, <laughs> wanting to play for New Zealand, and he showed them he still had it, and he was he was quite um, elder. Well, well, that's one of the things that I also remember is that his, he's got a hundred hundreds in uh, first class cricket in, uh, in 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 the UK. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So in a, yeah. so. Very and, okay, true. We'll, we'll we'll move on to your your um success and, and your history and and what you've been doing. So, look, I suppose just to give us a sort of an idea, like so, you've had some really good success with the likes of Takapuna Suburbs and Grafton at various times, and mm. so just just run us through what, what have you achieved with the um with at that club level, the Premiership club level in Auckland cricket. Yeah, look, it's it's a funny one because um I mean I think I was. Uh, l- Lucky in some ways to start at Suburbs. Um, I, I had one coaching gig uh, before Suburbs and um, d- didn't actually like it. It was um, there was an amalgamation, University and Ellerslie amalgamated, and they were looking for a coach, so they got me. And then they had another coach, and we co-coached for two years, and yep. it, it didn't it didn't quite work. And uh, so I went back to playing. And um, I went back to playing for two years and had a great time at Parnell. And that's when I actually met, met T. 
and T was a lot lot younger than me. And um, he um, <laughs> and we used to talk leg spin for, for hours. And uh, I mean, the passion in leg spin was what we had uh, so much in common. So and, were you um, now before ND, sure then? I mean, uh, Northern North Shore. Uh, no, it was not sure. Then I did the two years at Uni Ellerslie, then Parnell, yeah. the two, oh, two yeah. seasons I played, yeah. And, um, yeah, oh, look, I mean, T, yeah, look, I'll, I'll never forget uh, a rained out quarterfinal or something, and it was Cornwall Parnell, and everyone had buggered off, and me and T sat there in the Parnell um, ground with a cricket ball, and we talked leg spin for three hours or two hours or whatever. <laughs> There's a bit of passion there. Oh, oh look. And, and it, didn't, it didn't even, you know, the time didn't matter, you know, and the, the fact that we were playing each other didn't matter. And, and I think that's, that just sort of sums up the, uh, the passion that I think we have. Um, and then the, I think my coaching career really started after that at Suburbs and they sort of headhunted me and I had two seasons there and that, made me a coach, a proper coach, because um, guys like Michael Bates, I mean, I tell you, that guy, Michael Bates, fantastic young man, um, Jeet Raval, I think those two in particular were head and shoulders above everyone else in terms of making me a success because they made sure that these Westies listen to me because they're some <laughs> tough, <laughs> you know, the suburb stuff, Westies. And if you get them together and going in the right direction, they could be a force. But um, these two were fantastic. I still remember early on when Batesy would quieten down some of the young fellas and go, listen to the coach kind of thing. And <laughs> yeah. he, he kind of what, knew what I could bring to them, yeah. Was it, what was it about, um, so Jeet Raval and Michael Bates, was it, is it a level of professionalism that they had that the other players didn't have, or was it just uh, sort of being oh. older? Or what was, yeah. Look, they, they, yeah, they, they were on, a, on another level. Like, I mean, classic example is Jeet. I mean, Jeet, uh, <laughs> I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, he's not an athlete. He's not a super athlete <laughs> as such. But boy, boy, did he, <laughs> boy, did he work on it. You know, he worked on like even movement. Okay. So Batesy would come to training earlier than others and go have a few runs. He'd do some sprints. He'd do all these other things that when the boys came, came to training, they'd see these two doing. And they were both playing for Auckland. And Batesy almost took Chidi under his wing to do that, you know. And, and I mean, look. GD became so much improved from when he started in all those all those facets. Oh look. Um, on G, like if you look at GD now, I caught up with him, I saw him on Sunday. And even prior to that, the man is quite possibly easily the fittest. Mm -hmm. If you see him and you think, okay, like you said, you know, he's not the athlete because he's pitted against ten other fantastic athletes. Right, mm, who are right. a lot more athletic naturally. Yeah. Gee, if you put him against any average Joe Blog, he's fitter, he's leaner. And the biggest thing is he's got a he doesn't give up and he will continue to do it and do it and do it. Oh. He breaks himself, but that giving Absolutely. up attitude isn't there in him, and that's no. yeah. And Batesy, you know, you don't, yeah, he's the same thing. Yeah. Bates <laughs> so is a lot it's... more naturally fit. But I mean, those of you that don't know Michael Bates, Michael Bates. <laughs> played international cricket. He captained yeah. Auckland. He probably should have captained Auckland for a lot longer. Uh, um, he's also the brother of um, yeah, I Stephen quite like Bates. Him. Stephen Bates, the All Black. Yeah, so they they're a sporting family, but not uh, related to Susie Bates. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Although no. everyone tells him that he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's better than he is. Just, no, just on Michael look, Bates, though, don't, don't you think yeah. he, he seemed to stop playing? Like, he was, like, just seems like to me, as an Auckland fan and a, a Black Cats fan, just hitting his straps, yeah. and then all of a sudden he retired. Oh, his ankle. Look, uh, his body was yeah. Yeah. When he was 19 or 20, he had a quite a big ankle surgery uh -huh. that never came right, and then it came right maybe when he was 23, 24. Uh -huh. And from there, he had a good seven, eight years and then oh, like six, seven years, and then it started going again. And he did. He worked diligently to keep it going, 
but he's a big boy. He's a, there's, uh, yeah, he's a big boy. Just Absolutely. Big big frame, yeah. So the ankle started giving in. He, you know, jabs and all sorts. And then yeah, it was enjoyment. just fine. Towards the end. Enjoyment went out of the game. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah look, it's, it's when it's hurting. Thanks. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's very, like, you know, as you, as you talk about Batesy, the, the biggest thing that comes to my mind is leadership. You know, mm. leadership is something that's really misunderstood. And I definitely understood it through cricket. And Batesy just uh, personified leadership, you know, just everything he did, the way he did it. <laughs> and he was one of the can boys. You, so can you give a few tips on what, I mean, yeah. like, so how do you become what a good like, leader? How what do you become leading? a good leader? What is it? What are the things that you do to be a good leader? Yeah. I mean, obviously, turning up early to practice is a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just think it's values. You know, it's just values. It's um, hard work. It's I'll, I'll never forget um, Mitch McLenahan, young Tearaway, and I'll I'll never forget it, it was a semi or a yeah I think it was a semi one day game at um, Ken Maunder and uh, two left armers going at it. Batesy and Mitchy, and Mitchy was firing out, bowling fast. Whereas Batesy had an Im immaculate length and just enough swing, and I think he got something like two for two for twenty or something in ten overs, and that was a match winning match winning spell. Whereas a whole way of going about playing Mitch was to leave him because he was that quick and sort of tear away quick at that stage, and um, and you know that. That's a classic example of Bates. He, he, he stood up because he was pretty much the um, the, the best player we had, you right. know, and he and he stood up, you know, when we when we really needed to. So, uh, and and yeah, values. You know, he had all those values that you. Um, <laughs> he did so smoke play, like, I mean, like in, in your career <laughs> as a coach through Auckland club cricket at premiership level. You've actually coached some really top class oh. players. In terms Look, of coaching those players, how do, you, how do you manage that? I mean, you've got these guys that are coming back to you from, say, playing for the Aces or maybe even playing for the Black Caps. Headstrong oh. players that think that they're, you know, they're, well, they just goes. have to turn up. How, how do you deal with that? What do you do? Yeah. Well, really good question, question Ashwin. Um, for me, the, I was, again, I think I was pretty luck, lucky because the players that um, came back to play for the club teams that I coached were – Great blokes, you know. Um, talk about um, Kachopas, uh, O'Donnells, Robbie. I mean, God, Robbie's just an unbelievable bloke. Um, Batesy, uh, GD, um, you know, all, all these guys, they just uh, got to. I mean, I'll never forget. Guppy got out in a one day game, and two hours later, there was a text on my phone saying, I'm available this Saturday. <laughs> You know, and he was he was playing in Aussie. And, you know, I mean, that's the kind of guy he is. He loves playing at suburbs. Uh, Nisham, you know, Jimmy Nisham was another one that I just absolutely adored. The, the guy was so misunderstood. You know, he 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 had self-belief more than you'd uh, ever imagine. You know, he was the boy's own sort of cricketer. But everyone misunderstood that self-belief as ego or Arrogance. other things arrogance but jimmy loved playing for suburbs i mean if he's allowed he'd probably still play for them i reckon you know? <laughs> I <think he> tried. <laughs> did, he, he did tried. he try i'm not surprised <laughs> a couple of years ago i think a couple of years ago i know he must have been new zealand contracted before he was dropped or maybe he was first class something right. he definitely wasn't playing for auckland and right. it was talked that um to allow Jimmy to come back from injury and play for suburbs and Auckland cricket was very quick to shut it down because it kind of yeah. jeopardizes and makes a bit of a mockery of other clubs, um, other associations, premier cricket, where yeah. a lot of black caps do reside in Auckland and they might just say, oh, look, I'll yeah. load myself back up for an Auckland club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Look, it's it's tough. It's a tough one. And, and Taffy. Yeah, <laughs> look, I'm not surprised because he, he loves those guys and – um uh, and he, and even Tuffy, Tuffy, look, Tower was again. I mean, unreal. He, um, there were two T20s that, and I think we definitely won one with him. And he was opening the batting because yeah. he was coming back from shoulder surgery and uh, he couldn't play as a bowler, so he would he would bat for us. And my God, that that guy had so much talent. 
you know, and, and you could just see the, like one of the things I learned from Tower was doing uh, throwdowns, don't do it on the net, do it on the grass, underarm throwdowns, because you wait for the ball, you know, when you're, when you're playing. And he always did that before the, before the day started. And again, you know, leadership, because he, he did that. He'd, he'd text me and go, can you come 20 minutes earlier, Sherubin? And of course I did. And, and he'd do that. And boys would turn up and see us doing throwdowns on the grass. And they go, why are you doing that? And then next minute, they're all doing it, you know? And that's, <laughs> that's just, to me, that's, that's leadership through action, you know? Mm. Did, did you yeah. sort of like, we, we talked about with Glenn Turner and sort of like, you know, you're feeling a bit embarrassed when, you know, such a, uh, um, an icon of the game walks into the room. I mean, you've mentioned so many great names and we're talking at a club level and, and playing in the team. Did you walk into a room one day, you know, ever and sort of think, what do, I mean, what am I going to tell these guys? Yeah, well, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I did not coach Guppy. I didn't okay. do anything with him. You know, he, was, he played in the team. He was big time. But, I mean, uh, you know, uh, no, I, I didn't say much. I mean, even GD. You know, I, we would talk. We were very open and we were very honest and we'd talk. Um, and I think there was one stage when I was coaching suburbs and Giri was trying to prove that he was a white ball player by in the two days. He would go and smash it. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember, T, but, you know, but I mean, look, Giri's just, ah, uh, look, you know, just a quality human being. You know, he uh, he's, a, he's a teetotaler. He doesn't eat meat, uh, but God, he has a great sense of humor and is one of the lads and he just loves, loves the game. And yeah, he's, he's one that, um, he's one that I love. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Herbert in the uh, <laughs> chat room, uh, accusing you of dropping names there. <laughs> well, you, you asked. I was asked, Warren, I was asked. I'm not going to do it, Warren. <laughs> So we're we're with all these playing. players, oh, sorry, no, no, go, no. Go, you go, you go. I was going to say, like, I mean, with all these players you've coached over the years, yes. and obviously you've you've had um, you know high profile players as well in your teams. How do how did you identify the up and comers, and you know what, and also what was your coaching style with these people? I mean, because yes. you're going to coach the um, high profile players and t- t- treat them a little bit differently, I suppose. Mm. As the get performance up to that level yeah look yeah, uh, yeah very so interesting how, question how, what was your style around all that yeah 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 very interesting question i mean the thing is we, we like i i know at suburbs in particular we had that thing where you know if, if the ace or the international was available not only did he play but he played in the position that he wanted to for for instance michael bates um was batting quite low for the aces. But I said, no, nah, you've got to work on that. You're a fantastic bowler, but you can contribute more with the bat at a club level. So you're batting six. Um, Tuffy, I remember, you know, shoulder surgery. He wanted to open because he wanted to test himself with the new ball and all that. And some others wanted to open. So what do you do? But you've got to back the international player. But the, the best thing, Rohit, was all these guys, most of them, I'd say almost all of them, they would give so much to the youngsters. You know, Batesy, when he came when he came to practice, Batesy wouldn't just be standing around. He'd be talking to Josh and um, uh, Solia and Barry and, you know, all these guys about what he would do to get someone out. You know, what what would a um, Auckland player do? All those kinds of things. And I, I always believed that a team that has um, different kinds of individuals, as long as you get them going in the same direction, they would win. Where a, a team of uh, similar blokes wouldn't do as much. They, they don't bring as much to the table, you know. And when you have experience um, and um, inexperience, you put all that together, I think you get a win- winning formula. You know, so how you do you talk about? Them, oh, sorry, get Taryn. How do, you, how do you get them to go in the same direction? Yeah, my question. I was going to say the same question actually. Yeah, anyway. look, I think yeah, that's where the things like the culture, the values, the um, things that are not negotiable, all of those things come into play. 
Now, and, do you um, say that? Do you say that, or do the players set the culture and are non-negotiable? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think my teaching comes into that because mm. basically we, we have a whiteboard at this. I think I've done this for the last seven, maybe eight seasons. We have a whiteboard at the start of the season, maybe around pre-season time, and we we set the um, set the culture. But I have a piece of paper. And I try and direct them towards it, and so that they understand that it's coming from them, but it's definitely some input from the way I want to coach and I want to direct people. Um, I'm I'm a big believer in uh, things like you know having a learning environment. So you know um, if someone needs you know because I can't do everything. You know I, I mean I'm the coach, but mm. and I'm I'm on the lookout all the time, but. Um, there's other people can help each other, then you grow together, you know? And, um, yeah, so uh, some what of the do, stuff come with. What do you reckon are your non-negotiables as a coach? Mm-hmm. Surely you would have had certain things that you said now. Well, regardless, I don't care who you are or how good you are or how much modern-day coaching says you've got to drive it yourself. What are your non-negotiables that you mm-hmm. think is important? Oh, look, uh, I've got a few, but I've, I've got... <laughs> In fact, I've got quite a few. I've got non-negotiables, sorry, non-negotiables for betting, for bowling, and even my coaching. And my coaching, it's uh, I call it the three C's, and that's commitment. And what I tell the players is, I'll commit, I'll commit hard out for the season, and I want you to commit. And if you don't commit, then whatever happens happens. So commitment, uh, communication. You know, and that's huge for a coach, I think. And then the last C that I have is camaraderie, which sort of happens if you get the first two right. Yeah. So that, those are, yeah, those are some of my not negotiables. But uh, Can you there just are. Go through those three C's again, please. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> commitment. I just watched and, the podcast, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> Okay. Oh, are, are, are you coaching Ashwin? I am. I am. I coach co- cricket and rugby, um, but oh, at, at junior level. So um, you know, some Good of the, yeah. Honestly, you, the the stuff that you're giving is like, wow, this is gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good three C's. You know, you talked about you talking about um, commit, commitment, right? Yeah. You could almost, and I don't know if you do it, but I'm kind of thinking, oh, actually, that's cool. But how could I make that my own? But instead mm. of just copying it, and I thought, okay, hang on. Commit is almost the best word in the sense no, it's no. one C because with batting, you can say commit. Commit to your shot. Oh, commit that, to your process. Look, Commit to the ball you're going to bowl. Back absolutely. yourself. Just commit, commit, commit. Whatever Completely. you do at the end of the day, cricket is about decision-making process. Yeah. Your skill absolutely. Is, absolutely. Skill is, skill is, yes, you need skill. Assume you have it. It's your decision-making process, right? Yeah. Yeah, completely. Look, look. Two two other words that come from commitment and total commitment is conviction and courage. And mm-hmm. to me, both those are also crucial because at the club level, a guy right, that walks up. Charge you eighty bucks an hour for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, this is a master class, but it's about two fifty. Yeah, look, look. All I say is, you know, I've just, I've just got my way because I've just learnt from a lot of good people, and yeah, I mean, I, I think the other thing to do really is you've got to, well, for me, I've got to, I read a lot about, like, I've got some books, like this, this is a book that, you know, is to me a fantastic book. Um, that says that guy, the Auckland City Council Library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, shh. anyway. So, um, <laughs> Good coach. Is that Bobby Simpson, is it? Bobby Bob Simpson, Simpson yeah. Oh. yeah. And he, he was the first, can you believe, he was the first ever Australian coach because they mm. didn't have coaches before then. And Bob Simpson... Like he understood the game again. Like Simpson to me is almost like a Turner in a in a lot of ways. But the book that he this book is like I've read that probably conservatively ten times because I've got so much out of it. Because and you know every around now when the season's finished and you you know put everything into it and you either done well or you haven't, you got to recharge and you get that inspiration 
Mm. And you read, you know, I read. I mean, I, I love, I've, I've read Eddie Jones, just uh, the last book yeah. that he put out and just mind, mindful of glorious stuff, which, um, you know, I can apply if, if I take it in, you know, and write deal it down. With the media. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a passionate coach, right? You're a passionate coach. You've got what? Titles with Takapuna. You've got premier titles with Takapuna. You've coached Robbie O'Donnell, who's now going to be possibly going to be named the first class captain for Auckland in all forms. Mm. Um, you've coached one of the Kachopas or two of the Kachopas when they were there. Um, you've coached the Ravals, the Bates, all the names we've kind of gone over, right? So you've got success through good players, average players, club cricketers. You've got that. Um, have you? Do you aspire to go coach <laughs> at the next level? Yeah, it's it's a funny one, man. Because years years ago, T, uh, one of the best coaches that I had talked to me about things you can control and things you can't. Yeah. And um, it's one of those things where I just look <laughs> for a little while. I I definitely did. I think before the kids came, and I just loved cricket coaching, and I'd love to have done, um, you know, first class and maybe internationals. And I used to actually have a thing on my wall, right across the wall, saying, um, want to be the best cricket coach I can be. And it, it was almost like international cricket coach. And then I thought, nah, that's that's a cop-out. So I said, no, nah, I want to win a World Cup. <laughs> so that was yeah. on my wall, you know, to yeah. motivate me and to try and do things which... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah what, so that, what, what got in the so, wait, hang on no what not what got in the way what's holding you back now other than the kids obviously <clears> family <throat> commitment there. exactly what, 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 what do you reckon that oh. Jerome and the party the coach need what kind of break do we you know or is <laughs> that just... oh look put it put it this way T like um, I think not last season that just finished but the season before I did a, I did some A's but it was yeah. tough work because I, I was doing relief teaching and then I had to not do relief teaching to do A's and so it was a sacrifice and all that. But, I mean, goodness, I loved it so much, you know, because yeah. you're going from the non-professional where the club player who pays money to now this could be a living for some of them. So, the, mm. the you know, the, the interest and the, yeah. oh, but the, the mindset, the mindset oh, everything changes. And it's, it's nuts. It's not good. Yeah. It's not bad. It's just so different. You've oh, gone from so different. To, and it also suddenly your pay packets involved because That's there's probably right. only one job per city that can pay a decent salary. So That's you've right. got to get that right as well. Uh, big time. You and, look, look, it was so different, but I just thoroughly enjoyed it. it the, the first first thing was it was it was a change to your normal drudgery, but. Um, you know, and, and it, you know, I, I say drudgery with, um, you know, because, you know, you've with got love. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> as much love as I can put out. But uh, really, um, you know, it can get like that. And that's where, look, you've got to have fun, you know, and that's that to me is crucial, you know, and how you're going to do that with Grafton to suburbs or whoever, it's, it's all different. But everyone has, has to have fun when they turn up. But, yeah, look. Put it this way, T, like let's say after listening to this and someone says, do you want to do a T20, you know, comp in Afghanistan or something? Mate, mm -hmm. I'd love it. I'd love well, it. We'd, Canterbury, we'd have are looking. Canterbury and India yeah. are going right out of the market. <laughs> would, you, would, you open, would you apply? Do you think yeah. is that something that would interest you it's, or you're pretty much rooted now in Auckland? No, nah, nah, look, I, I love being a dad. I love... Um, Love, love doing what I have to do for the for the kids, and I think this year looks like it's it's going to be with the kids. But oh, look, I've, I've thought about it. You know, I mean, I'll to me, you, I'll give you something that you like. So Steve Taylor's mentioned in the YouTube chat room something you could do yeah. while you're with the kids. It's the old <laughs> um, writing the coaching manual, mate. How, how's that sound? Yeah, yeah look, I, I have thought about it, and especially especially Ashwin towards the juniors, because mm -hmm. I mean, to me. You know, if you if you get the basics right, man, I tell you, you've got um, you know, you've got the world at the hands. 
I'll tell you what, I, I the book that I had, and unfortunately Aaron's son scribbled all the way through it. I thought I'd just mention that. I'm not, I'm not cut up about it at all. Um, it was a book called Stumpy and Bales. <laughs> and it was <laughs> Stumpy and Bales. It, was a, it, was, it, was a, it wasn't a fat book, right? And it was it um, like a picture book. It's a picture book. It is a picture book. <laughs> but it's a picture book, and it showed you how to do an outswing and an inswinger, and uh, yeah. you know, and all those sorts of things. Well. Oh, I wish it had a pop out. That would have been magical. Aaron's son would have cut it up. <laughs> Fantastic. No, look, yeah, no, Stevie, Stevie's um, an Aussie. He's uh, he's probably the nicest Aussie that's that's ever lived in the, on on the planet. Because he's from, uh, yeah, I know. It's it's an oxymoron, <laughs> but it happens. <laughs> living in Australia. No, there's not many, but Stevie's definitely one of them. And and. You, you shake hands with him and you just about break your hand because he, you know, he's the old fashioned man. He just you have a good handshake. Have a good hand hand hand. Oh, he's a great guy, big, tall lad, and yeah, he's a good man, Stevie. Hey, look, I might, I might take that opportunity to. Um, we're talking about um, the, the oh, coaching, coaching manuals and the like. It's just um, yeah. moving into the um, child children's pathways. What, what are the key things to develop children's games? Oh, oh Paul's got something hey, there. Paul. All right, producer. I, I generally don't jump on these shows. I try, I try and keep out of it, but I just have, <laughs> that's fine. If you were to move up coaching levels, do you then have to become? Do you have to move from? Would you have to specialise first? Would you have to be for, first off a, a batting coach or a fielding coach or a, or a bowling coach, or could you step up to being uh, a head coach straight away? Do you think, or ha, how would how would that progression? Yeah, work? yeah. Look, Paul, yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, you know, I think the way it works, and T T having played first class and being a coach probably better to answer it. But look, for me, what they talk about a lot is, and I don't know if it's in any way demeaning, but they, they talk about high performance and then they talk about community cricket. And believe it or not, uh, premier cricket comes under community cricket. So what, what that means is, you know, um, it feels like it's inferior, but I'll tell you what, Auckland premier cricket in particular the standard is right up there. The Headley, the two-day Headley, the, the standard of cricket is, to me, and I think um, AD... AD um, yeah, I was just going to say, Adrian, it. yep. yeah. Look, I mean, uh, Adrian, it's right up Adrian there. Said, Adrian said, let's take it up a notch. Adrian mm. said, our first-class cricket is up there with the top eight of championship cricket, right, mm. in county cricket. And then he also said, and he said he can only speak for Auckland cricket, and he said it's by far the most superior standard mm. of club cricket he's ever come across. Mm. Look, I'm, you know, I'm not so surprised. You know, the, the, the likes of – there's some county players, <laughs> and, you know, yeah, they and get, I've – They look like pretty average <laughs> club cricket when they come here. They get, they, get found, <laughs> they get found out. You know, they, and they come here. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Cornwall, Cornwall's had a few <laughs> – you know, uh, they yeah, think, look, Connell, Connell had Paul, Paul Collingwood, who I'm pretty sure was batting at eight. Rex Smith <laughs> had him at eight. And <laughs> two years later, he played for England. <laughs> he played for England. Yeah. 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 But, um, you, yeah, like, we, not often do you get, because we're a small community, eh? Because it's not often you'll get a Lockie Ferguson or a Mark Chapman. Like, not uh, so long ago, then the season just gone. There was Will Somerville, Ben Horn, Mark Chapman, Lockie Ferguson, Corey Anderson, and one other <laughs> playing club cricket on a Saturday. Thank for Parnell. Yeah. That's extreme. unreal. You feel sorry yeah. for the opposition that's come up against them. Yeah. Great, um, <laughs> that's incredible. Experience, but yeah. Geez, right. yeah, well, we had Grafton. We turned up for a T20, and we had Munro, um, uh, Glenn Phillips, um, who else was there? Um, uh, oh, Grobbler, Jamie Brown, Jamie Brown. Daniel yeah. Fern, Daniel Fern. Matt McEwen. Uh, Maddie wasn't playing that game too, but I tell you what, it was unreal. You know, I mean, we had, you know, I was, I was, don't concede games, obviously, but I was happy for us to lose graciously for that one. <laughs> rather than... <laughs> How did you go? So tell us the result. You know, what was the result? Pardon? What was the result of that game? Yeah, no, we lost, brother. We lost that one. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what I said? The interesting thing there is, is the fact is that just imagine if cricket nuts knew that they could go watch that caliber of player oh, 
playing look, club cricket, people would be turning down, turning up yeah. to the ground to watch that if they only look, knew that it was on yeah, or they were playing. Absolutely. Right. Look, absolutely. Ashwin, absolutely. Yeah, Ashwin, right. you know, that is, that is something that I think we don't do enough of. You know, they try and do it a little bit with T20. You know, they do it on a Wednesday night. Um, and the, the clubs that really do it well, they tell their juniors and then they turn up and they have a sausage sizzle and the atmosphere is brilliant. Like I'd, the, <laughs> the T20 that I said to you about Tacker that we lost, the atmosphere was amazing. You know, yeah. like in a club game to have... You know, you couldn't, you couldn't like you on the boundaries and Takapuna is a postage stamp on Eva Domain is like so yeah. small. And um, get it onto the motorway. Had, pretty much. And on the tennis courts. And, <laughs> you know, and you, you just, it was people, thick with people, you know. And I, I, you know, one of the reasons I reckon we lost was the fact that Not Sure brought so many supporters. And we just, we just didn't know, you know, it just felt like that next bit of pressure. Because there was, yep. you, know, you know, and, and club, we don't get that. And yeah. we, um, um, we played in a game, similar game. We um, le- just this year, Cumu. So we are a very small club, right? We're a small, yeah. we're the smallest fish. And um, we played the big boys, Suburbs. Oh, yeah. And, uh, which is great for us. Um, we were hoping there would be a domestic T20 so that none of the aces will be there to give us a shot. <laughs> but as yeah. happened, there was no Black Caps games either. So... Here comes Martin Gupto looking for a game. <laughs> Martin Gupto, Michael Barry, Sean Solia, uh, Ben Lister, Finn Allen, who's like the hottest thing to come out of New Zealand cricket off late. That's five. And, oh, God, I hope I'm not missing someone else. But there's about six or seven of them. We thought, oh, okay. <laughs> I went to pass with Michael Barry, and um, there was a couple of hundred people there. <laughs> Our ball absolutely fizzing, like fizzing to play against a Martin Gupto kind of thing. Uh, we had the toss. I won the toss. I looked around and I said, look, everything suggests we probably should bowl first here to allow because <laughs> everyone's going to watch Marty bat. But stuff here, I'm going to bat first. And <laughs> <laughs> As it happens, so we I'm got doing... ball for about 120. We got Marty. We, I mean, it was a tough wicket. Yeah. We it was more that we were shell shocked at the big names than anything else. Yeah. They didn't. Yeah, big boys. time. We just got shell shocked, and after that, our boys were lining up to take photos with Martin Gupta. <laughs> <laughs> we just played, yeah. and, and Marty would have said yes. He's such yeah, an he obliging yeah. fellow. Yeah, one of our premier bowlers, young young kid. He's only nineteen. His yeah. profile photo was with Martin Gupta. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Which is yeah. great. Just oh, oh, before, before, before we run out of time, I'm going to come back to the question that I was asking before our producer yeah. rudely dropped in. It's <laughs> yeah. just like, so children's pathways, improving the game and how, how to, and, and, and then also how to keep them in the game. So there's a lot yeah. there. Um, we're running out of time, yeah. so I thought I'd bundle it all together. Yeah, sure. Give us your look, thoughts around all that. Oh, look. Keeping keeping people in the game, I think that's that's the biggest bugbear of mine at the moment because um, I think, you know, I, I look around and people are talking about playing numbers and that's great, but you can go and get new playing numbers, but you got to keep the people that are playing, you got to keep them in the game, and the way you keep them in the game is to transfer the love of the game to them, you know, and I think. Passionate coaching is the is the key to that, and it really is. I reckon Ashwin, the the biggest thing that you can do as a for the juniors is because you know the the book that I showed you, the, he says um, fielding's the most important thing, and and the reason is you feel the most, yep. and everyone feels. So make fielding training fun, and you'll get a lot more because they'll do uh, do amazing things and. You know, and, and you, you look, at a, look at a team that's fizzing and that's a team that's taking amazing catches, you know, running around, slapping people on the bum, going, well done, mate. You know, not the one that's dropping. Now. Sorry? You can't do any of that now. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Outlawed, <laughs> yep. Outlawed, PC, gone. But, um, yeah, look, I mean, and not the teams that's dropping catches or nervous to take catches. Like, you know, you want the ball to come to you. And, you know, so the, the fielding training, I believe, is the one thing that you've got to put um, lots of thought into to make sure everyone's actually um, involved all the time. 
you know, not just like, you know, I, I've seen dads kind of go hit the ball and then one catches it, throws it, and then the other one does it, you know, that kind of thing. You can do that with maybe three, but if you do that with the whole team, then you sort of get waiting. Mm. Yeah, I've waiting. Around. I've got a question. You've seen a lot of cricket. You've seen a lot of cricket. You've seen top boys, all of that. You also see a lot of club cricket. I looked up the Auckland Aces side. The coach and the premier spinner is Will Summerbull. He's 37, I think. Yeah. And the next spinner is 32, Louis Delpo. And then they've got um, Ronnie Hira, who's also in his mid 30s, <laughs> or closing in on yeah. his mid 30s, right? In club cricket, who's the next cab off the rank? Yeah, I, young fella. Pers- yeah, personally, I think they've got to, you know, you've got to go four days, has to be someone. And what and T20 has to be someone different, in my view. Okay, don't get PC here. Get throw some names at me. Talk to me. <laughs> Look, I, I think T20, <laughs> I think Matt Jones is up there for me. Matt Jones, the left arm spinner. Mm. Okay, okay. I'll tell you yeah. what, you, you look at his you look at his stats last year, T. And I mean, you know, talking about stats, for me, that's the one reason that I believe hang on, where are you? Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> you should have played more cricket, international cricket, especially the white ball for me, because you know your yeah, stats no, are first class. Go, I want to. Okay, I wanna, okay. You Sorry. are going. Yeah, Matt Jones. Yeah, Matt me. Jones is up there for me. Yeah. Um, it's a funny one. The rest of them, there's potential. There's huge potential. Let's say no, someone like Matt Jones, nobody's ready. Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. Look, Matt Jones in the T20 and the 50 overs, I reckon, will do a fantastic job. Because he's um, he's the vice captain this year. Oh, sorry, last season at Tacker, and they had a great season. They won the T20. They were right up there in the 50 overs, and I think I think he'll do a great job. Carl De Beer, uh, in terms of actually what he can do with the ball, is amazing. But he's got to learn to he's got to learn a lot of stuff. But he's he's up there for me. Um, just just from the magic side of things, he's got Dane Watson. A... Seems to be, Dane Watson seems to be their little um, go-to guy at the moment in terms of the A program. Mm. You read him? Oh, look, Dano. Dano has been around for a, for a long time, and um, I, I like Dane. I like Dane in terms of his uh, determination and his attitude. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if he does enough in terms of really ripping it. You know, I think he's got more of change of pace, uh, more about beating people in the air rather than beating people and ripping it. You know, the, the ones that... that sorry. Was yeah, say, that, it, doesn't that style of game suit our pitches, though? Because we don't really come up with turning pitches, don't we? Oh, no, no, no. Look, the last season, last season was a classic. Um, for me... I mean, I completely agree with AD. I, I really enjoyed last last week's show in particular. I thought because AD had a lot of lot of great things to say, and you know, one of the things is the standard of pitches has gone way up. And what I mean by that is, if you don't have good spinners, Rohit, you will suffer in Premier cricket. I mean, one yeah. of the big reasons we got up, we got up, we had a left arm spinner was our skipper, a leg spinner, and an off spinner. And we would even bowl someone else as a bit of a change spinner just because the good pitches later in the season will turn, you know? Right. Tell me, right. Tell me. And, right. Tell me. and, and then bounce yeah. as well. And good yes. pitches will bounce. And then bounce will get, give you wickets. And that's, yeah. the, that's the key to it. So, yeah. I mean. So, tell me. Three players. I want you. We 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 going overtime here. So three yeah, players. Yeah, you're, three you're putting more. me on the on the on the step all the time, T. Yeah, three yeah. players. <laughs> three players that you've heard it here first. So tell me three players that you think oh. will go on to play aces. Now let's go, let's go with one. One player you oh, know is going to go on God. in the next few months. Bro, I'd, I'd have liked you to have given me a bit of time to think oh, well, about that, it. No fun in that. On the spot. <laughs> <laughs> batsman, batsman, bowler. Up to you. Your call. Uh, anything cool. you know. So in a year's time, you're going to be here going, I told you. Oh, my be. goodness. Um, we'll have you back before the year's up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ongoing progress. That's right. Oh, look, Tuffy, I mean, uh, look. Oh. oh, look, there's there's so many I like. And, and, the, and the biggest thing for me is that I, 
I mean, personally, I think, you know, I, I look at a player and I see the possibilities. And sometimes the player themselves don't see it. You know what I mean? And, um, oh, good. Arun Ranchard. Yes, I do like that. Look, he's, but I mean, we all know about Adi. Um, Aditya yeah. Ashok. Oh, no, maybe he can be the pick. Because he's my pick. Yeah. I reckon, yeah. reckon they've got to go to him soon. Him or Kyle Debeer, yeah. got to start picking him. Yeah, look, and, and, and you can yeah, pick both big of them. Time. You can pick, pick both of them, and you can have like for them learning with each other because they they are so different. They're both leg spinners, but they're so different in terms of what they offer. Yeah. But very very skillful, and and that's the thing with cricket. It's a skillful, it's a skill based game, and sometimes we forget that. And pre season for me, all about skill development. You know, nothing about other things. You know, making yourself a, a better cricketer. But, hmm. but Ashwin, I'm I'm happy to help you more, man, with uh, <laughs> with the juniors. Because look, we we've got to make sure that the juniors are looked after because yep. um, they're the future, you know. And, and yeah, look, want... I, I got I was I had a I had a great group of kids. Um, my son, but unfortunately, my son was playing two years ahead. And then right. Auckland brought an age age for stage or whatever it's called this year, right. so they wouldn't let him play in that team. So right. I couldn't, I didn't end up coaching them. So and oh, it, was, right. it, was, it was just like you build that, as you say, you build that rapport with the team. And yeah. and I really understand, even though you're talking about obviously adults, but even with young children, you get the. It, it, it's a little bit different in the fact that you need the children to respect you because you need mm. them to listen to you, and listen. um, and you work have on that, and you've had that. Always, always have a whistle. Uh, actually, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got that from you. Know, yep. Yeah, always because you know the kids know that means something because otherwise you lose your voice and you know there's so many other things. And, no, and, and just make it fun, bro. Make it. Yep. Make it fun for all the time. You know, there's something going on, but then they can do more if they want later or on another day or in a small group or whatever it is. But it's well, that's be fun. the thing. Absolutely, you're right. I mean, it's finding those 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 grids, those skills um that mm. they can then go away with their friends and do it at home whatever Big as well time. because they, they enjoy it so much at training that they Big carry time. on doing it yeah yeah, yeah. And, and skill development you know catching with the left hand but just the left hand you know right. um just so many little things like that i'll I tell you who's really good at um working out those was paul strang he he came up with some beauties um <laughs> did a winter clinic with him and just such a such a flexible mind that he'd bring out these things and we'd go, how do you do that? And and the thing is, it's every game that they play, you had to figure out the, the way in which to win it. And that was part of the fun, you know, and, and the kids, kids dig that. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's where, you know, PE teachers do, do really well, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's Steve Taylor. Has <laughs> your hand recovered from last time? Yeah, oh, look, I'm going to say a Sri Lankan and a tough Aussie. I mean, doesn't doesn't really doesn't really uh, not an equal match, but yeah. Hey, so actually, actually, you you dropped the Sri Lankan part in there. I mean, you, you were 15, was it when you came over? Was you said? Yes. yes. So so who was it, Black Caps or Sri Lanka? Oh, black caps all the way, bro. Just, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, because the funny thing, funny thing, Ashwin is, I, I love the Lankans. Um, I, I remember going to a dinner of a, a friend who hosted them when they were here years ago. Just you know, the humility in the boys was, mm. you know, next to unbelievable. But um, I think the biggest thing for for me was <laughs> my dad left Sri Lanka because of the politics. And so he never supported Sri Lanka. And I've always had that in my mind. And right. I mean, I got you up dead massively. And so I, I had to support the black caps. And, you know, <laughs> and the thing is, you know, some of the black caps, so it's almost, you can't not support them. Not support you know? them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, cool. Sri Lanka, uh, well, look, put it this way. If New Zealand's not there, then Sri Lanka is my second oh, team. Is your second always. team. Yeah, sure. Yeah, always. Guys, yeah. we got anything else for Sherubin before we wrap it up? Yeah, nah, nah. Sherubin, no, thank you very much. No, it's been very good. Yeah, no, nah, thanks. Um, awesome listening to you and chatting cricket. As always, no, it's been great. Any, 
Yeah, I'm just done. giving Nothing a big up better. for bringing the two Lions to the first yeah. grade as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Thank you, brother. Thank you. I don't know with Grafton. But look, yeah. look, we better wrap it up now. But yeah, Sharubin, thank you very much for being on the show today. Really appreciate yeah. it. And we definitely look forward to having you back on the show again. So to everybody, thank you for tuning in. Um, we really pleasure. appreciate the viewers. Make sure you hit that share button. Love you to like do hit the like button, but make sure you hit that share button. Get that love out there for our show, Swinging from the Hip. And remember, if you want to hear the show again, which I have to, to find out what the three C's were, you can get all this on, <laughs> I, um, you download your podcast, um, iHeartRadio, plus a bunch of Acast. There's a few bunch uh, pod, podcast thingies as well. Download it, listen to it on your walks, listen to your drive home, and we'll see you here again next week, Thursday, 8 o'clock on Swinging from the Hip. Go hard, boys. Thank you.